On August 27, 2011, concerned citizens gathered in Burnaby, B.C. to express solidarity with protesters in Washington, D.C. and to protest the increase of pipelines and oil tankers to facilitate the expansion of the Alberta tar sands. They marched to Kinder Morgan's Westridge Terminal and the site of a massive oil spill from a ruptured pipeline in 2007. Well, thank you, Tria, and, and thanks to all of you for being here today on such a beautiful Saturday. Um, you know, we're here today, I think, many of us, because we're inspired by what's going on right now in Washington, D.C. Has everybody been paying attention to what's going on in Washington, D.C. right now? It's been pretty amazing to see. Um, so far, I think almost 400 people have been arrested and uh, just sitting in front of the White House in an act of nonviolent civil disobedience. Um, and there's 2,000 people in total who've actually pledged to face arrest in the next, uh, in the next week. Total, there'll be 2,000 people, uh, which would make this one of the largest acts of civil disobedience in the history of the United States. You know, and it, it, it seems actually like a bizarre coincidence almost. It just happens to be the uh, 48th anniversary of when Martin Luther King stood at the uh, almost the exact same location and, um, you know, did his I Have a Dream speech. And, um, you know, strangely, the, uh, the weather is actually getting in the way of the opening of that monument. Now, it's impossible to say that any one particular weather event is tied to climate change. Um, but what we do know is that there's more extreme weather events, and they're happening more often. Uh, and the impacts of climate change are already being felt around the world. And it just seems almost like a, a poetic uh, reminder of why those folks are sitting there in front of the White House fighting against this Keystone Pipeline, that they can't even dedicate the uh, monument to Martin Luther King because of a weather event, because of a major hurricane the size of Europe that's coming down on the eastern coast. Now, you've got to be careful, like I said, to, to tie any one particular event to climate change. But what we do know, like I said, is that these events are getting more extreme, they're happening more often, and they're definitely at least somewhat tied to human activity. And, uh, you know, even if you doubt climate change, and, and there are folks out there who do, I, uh, I was amazed that yesterday, right on my Facebook wall, I got into an argument with a guy who was doubting climate science. Even while this huge hurricane was, was bearing down on the East Coast, you know, he, he, was, he was doubting the science. And I think it's important to remember that, uh, you know, even if you don't believe in climate science, there's a lot of reason to be concerned about this oil. And uh, we're standing only a couple blocks away from where there was a major oil spill, um, you know, right here in Burnaby. In 2007, you know, accidentally, somebody just hit a line right over there. Uh, in fact, we're not far from where that pipeline runs right underground by here. And, uh, you know, and, and it, it dumped poison all over this neighborhood. And, uh, you know, there was people who were affected. There was a lot of people who were concerned about their health. And yet, instead of doing something real serious about it, all we have is a bit more warning signs in the area. You know, and, uh, and not only that, but the amount of oil that's being shipped through here has increased since then. Um, you know, so what we're saying is, no matter where these proposals are, are coming forward, whether it's in Washington, D.C., where they're fighting against the Keystone XL pipeline, which some people have described as defusing a carbon bomb, um, you know, for those of us who are concerned about climate change, that's a large, large wick connecting one of the biggest sources of uh, fossil fuel left on planet Earth, definitely the biggest one in North America, connecting it to the heavy oil refineries in Texas, you know, not far from where that BP oil spill was. But, uh, you know, there's also a lot of people in Montana and Nebraska and elsewhere who are just worried about that pipeline in case it ruptures. They don't want to see the same thing happen in their neighborhood that happened here in Burnaby. So what we're saying to our leaders in Washington, D.C., and right here in British Columbia, is we're not going to sit idly by and let these facilities be expanded. We're not going to sit idly by and just watch the pipelines and the tanker traffic continue to increase in size. Most people don't even know it, but right now, two times a week, leaving right from over there, there's two tankers carrying about three times as much as was spilled by the Exxon Valdez, putting our Vancouver Harbor at risk. And not only that, but Kinder Morgan, the company who, uh, who runs that terminal over there, has very quietly been trying to actually expand the amount of oil that's passing through there. In fact, they've said that they want to go up to 700,000 barrels a week coming through that pipeline, which would drastically increase not only the threat to our coastline, but it would also increase the amount that we are contributing to climate change. In the fight against climate change in British Columbia, we're standing blocks away from ground zero. That Kinder Morgan terminal is really where 
the, the, the fight is right at its core right here in British Columbia because that's where the existing tanker traffic is coming from. That's where the exports to Asia and down the, the coast, uh, the west coast of Canada and the United States is coming from. And it's the one place where we can really choke off the expansion of, of tar sands oil right here in British Columbia. So I think our fight is very much connected to the fight that uh, is happening in Washington, D.C. Uh, I, for one, am here to say that I'm in solidarity with the folks at the White House. Who here is in solidarity with the folks at the White House? <laughs> If our government here in Canada and British Columbia wants to oppose, uh, it wants to bring in the, uh, more and more oil through this area, who here is going to stand up and say no? So that's really why we're all here today. Because, uh, you know, whether you're in Washington, D.C. or you're in British Columbia, we're putting our government on notice that we're not going to allow these things to happen in the quiet of night anymore. We're going to stand up and say no and be present anytime anyone tries to bring forward the kind of infrastructure that will expand the largest source of climate changing pollution in North America. Uh, you know, and, and this is, is ground zero, like I said, right here in British Columbia. Uh, the fight in Washington, D.C. continues, and hopefully Obama will listen. Um, before we march down to, uh, to the Keystone XL, uh, or sorry, to the Kinder Morgan, uh, terminal. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you a statement that was sent to us by Bill Mc, Bill McKibben from 350.org. Is everybody here familiar with Bill? He's the guy who uh, who runs 350.org, which is um, the group that's been organizing a lot of those large uh, uh, you know um, actions around the world. These these large uh, protests and marches and, and and a variety of different activities related to the expansion of the tar sands and uh, also just fighting climate change worldwide. Uh, he's also one of the lead organizers of the action at the White House. So I'm going to read you the statement from Bill. Greetings from Washington, and so many thanks from everyone here for your work to shut down the western edge of this tar sands fiasco. In a sane world, we wouldn't even need to make this fight. The planet's premier climatologist, James Hansen, who, by the way, was arrested, I believe, yesterday at the White House, Woo! said recently, uh, James Hansen said recently that if we really developed the tar sands, it would be game over for the climate. But in a world where money speaks as loudly as it does in ours, it's always going to be hard and a close battle to keep this carbon in the ground, to keep our oceans and ports clean, and to keep our landscape free from leaking pipelines. Please know that as you wage your fight there against the backdrop of the gorgeous BC mountains, you're joined by those in the sand hills of Nebraska and on the East Texas Plains and in the jails of Washington, D.C. We don't have as much money as the other guys, but we've got enough spirit and solidarity to give ourselves a fighting chance. Thank you so much from Washington, D.C., Bill McKibben.